She was a Me Too trailblazer before Me Too made it onto the front page. Fox News host Gretchen Carlson has sued the network in 2016, accusing then-CEO Roger Ailes of sexual harassment and retaliation. Carlson ultimately settled a case, reportedly for $20 million and an apology, but with that payout came a non-disclosure agreement, meaning she's not allowed to talk about what happened to her, even as movies like Bombshell tell the story. In the years since, she's been calling on Fox to release her and others from their NDAs and has co-founded the organization Lift Our Voices, which aims to stop companies from using NDAs to cover up harassment and discrimination. And that's exactly what brought her to the Massachusetts State House today, alongside State Senator Diana DiZaglio. Two years ago, DiZaglio went public with her story of how, when she was a House aide in 2011, she and a representative were seen together in the House chamber during a late-night party. And although an investigation found nothing inappropriate had happened, DiZaglio said she was the subject of rumors, name-calling, and propositions, which continued until her boss told her she should look for a new job. She was offered a severance package, but only if she signed an NDA, which she did. But then when she became a state rep in 2018, she publicly broke the agreement. I don't break this NDA to attack or accuse anyone. I'm not asking for more money or threatening a lawsuit, and I will even give the severance money back if I am asked. I just want this awful practice to stop. DiZaglio was later elected to the Senate, where she says lawmakers have been open and supportive of her crusade, but says her former colleagues in the House have not been. She and Carlson joined me earlier today. Senator, thanks so much. Good to see you. And Gretchen, it's great to meet you. Thanks so much. So I spent Saturday morning seeing Bombshell. I can say anything about Bombshell I want. You live Bombshell, and you can't say one single word. Is that true? Correct. Does that drive you out of your mind? Listen, I have to take the high road on this. You know, I have to look at big picture and say that if the movie encourages other women to come forward and be empowered, then it's worth it. We weren't discussing sexual harassment in the workplace three and a half years ago. So we've made huge strides. If I would have said to you that, that three and a half years ago that they were going to make a movie about harassment in the workplace and they were going to have Nicole Kidman starring as somebody and a bunch of other people that are famous, you would have laughed at me. Tell me, let me tell you, she's great. You can't say it. Uh, I can't. Well, you <laughs> well really, I can say she's great. Well, I just can't can. say whether or not the story is depicted accurately. Well, uh, let me say that uh, we have read that you received some money, that you received an apology, which is otherworldly, considering the source. Was the NDA a deal breaker at that time, or is not even something that occurred to you? Yeah, so, so thank you. My, my settlement was progressive for its time three and a half years ago because I did get that rare public apology. I also was given the ability to talk about the harassment in the workplace issue, which I have done every single day with regard to advocacy and trying to change laws and benefit for women. But had I known that I would have ignited a cultural revolution, I would have thought long and hard about not signing that NDA. But I had no idea we would be at this place in time right now and have made so much progress. Bring it back uh, locally. You signed one and then broke it. Yes, uh, I did. What's the goal of this legislative campaign here is that Gretchen is here to support? What, what are you trying to achieve? The goal of this campaign is to ensure that we're protecting victims of harassment and assault moving forward from being forced into the shadows and from being, being, from being forced to be silent. Right now, currently in Massachusetts, people are actually allowed to purchase the silence of their victims, protect predatory behavior so that these predators can move from one victim to the next with the victim potentially in the future, not having any idea that they're out there. So we're trying to pass this legislation to prevent that from happening. You know, uh, but when we spoke to, we communicate with the House leadership, uh, and their contention is unless a victim, unless a survivor wants, uh, in their words, a non-disclosure agreement, there won't be one. So what's wrong with that thinking, Senator? That's absolutely not true. The House still allows for non-disclosure agreements to be used, even when the victim is not driving the conversation. The speakers used 33 non-disclosure agreements, as you know, and uh, my non-disclosure agreement that he gave me certainly was not at my request, and I certainly did not want to sign it. They also contend none of those 33 had anything to do with sexual harassment or, or assault. Is that true? Which is quite the conundrum, isn't it, Jim, since I have come forward and said that it does. Are you okay with this notion that even if a survivor, him or herself, says, I want to sign something, that... That should be outlawed. They shouldn't have that no, opportunity. They have, the, they have the opportunity to do that with the senator's bill as well. 
So what, so then how do you deal with the notion that a, let's say a woman uh, may be coerced into quote voluntarily? How do you decide, what, how do you determine whether something is coerced or voluntary? Well, because I think you have to look at the power pendulum currently. This is how the, what the dynamic is right now when you have NDAs. Here's the purported victim and here's the perpetrator, right? She's way down here or he because they don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. The minute you give them a voice, look what happens. You know, and you formed this uh, Lift Our Voices. While you can't speak, as you said, about the particulars of your case, you can talk about the issue in general. Your goal is to end muzzling and silence, as I've read on your website. But it seems to me as an outsider here, well, I guess I'm not an outsider, I'm part of society, is that the likelihood of someone, a perpetrator, being a perpetrator is less if he or she knows that there is no likelihood that they can buy the silence of the survivor 100%. later. Is that, not, is that yes. not true? So it has a dual effect, actually, with my power pendulum mm -hmm. example again. This person, when they know you have a voice, maybe they don't harass anymore or abuse or assault. So that's our entire mission with Lift Our Voices. It may be too late for my particular story, although I am demanding that Fox News mm -hmm. let me out of my NDA. We're doing this for the myriad of women across this country and men who have been muzzled. And there's no way of knowing how many there actually are. Let me be clear. So you're both okay with an NDA if there's a, however it's determined, a voluntary seeking of an NDA by Personally, an Jen, right? as long Personally. as she's not being forced into it. Personally, yeah, I have an issue with non-disclosures for, 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 for assault and harassment across the board. However, I have put a provision in this language to allow for the victim to request one because the speaker and governor have said continuously that that is their concern is that a victim needs to be able to request one. So I have put that in this language and taken away their argument for not passing this and yet they still refuse to come to the table and to pass this legislation even with the option for the victim being present in this legislation. What about the notion, I heard Mitchell Garbedian at your press conference say that under, depending on the circumstances, if someone were to sign one of these things, let the survivor have the right to opt out of it after the fact. Absolutely. Isn't and that a, a protection as well? Yes, and I have actually advocated for the past and continue to advocate for my bill and more on this issue. This bill is very limited in scope because of the pushback that I have received we changed the language of it to make sure that this was something that we'd be able to get past to take a step in the right direction. This is the first of many steps that we need to take moving forward on this issue. And I agree with Attorney Mitchell Garrett-Bedian. And I agree with a lot of people that say this bill needs to be expanded. And I hope that my colleagues will join me in that. But they first have to release this very limited in scope bill out of committee. And they won't even do that. What, what do you say to the person who's not involved in the transaction that uh, I have an interest in this too. Because when you sign an NDA, even if you do it completely voluntarily, that makes it likely, if neither name is disclosed, that that perpetrator is still out there. Uh, oh, whether he or she is Roger Ailes or somebody well, else. That's the whole problem with this issue. Is that we so have, why are they ever acceptable if that's the case? Because it doesn't protect no, no, me. No, I'm not, no, I'm not saying that. We, I'm saying 100% I'm agreeing with the senator mm. that the perpetrator should always be exposed. Always be, out always be exposed. You're only talking about the ability of the survivor yes, to yes, keep yes, a yes, fine. Yes, 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 yes. No, of, of right. course. No, silence is how we have kept this issue under wraps. It's frankly why this movement has continued. Because the American public was mad. Because they were saying to themselves, how have we not known about this issue? The reason they didn't know about it was because of forced arbitration clauses and employment contracts that puts you in a secret chamber and NDAs, those two things. It's why we're fighting so hard to eradicate both. Final part of the tipping point. Are you hopeful, by the way, I heard you say at the press conference there's a toxic culture in this business, that's not, in this building. That's not exactly an optimistic sense about getting somewhere. Are you optimistic or no? I have been calling members of the Judiciary Committee and asking them for support to pass this legislation out of committee and to report it out favorably. And there has been tremendous pushback with members of Speaker DeLeo's leadership team calling around simultaneously, trying to uh, make false statements about the legislation, saying that victims don't have an option, saying that everybody's opposed to it, and outright saying that there will obviously be repercussions. Why do you think they're taking that position, Senator? Because the Speaker wants to be able to continue to abuse these agreements in his chamber with his own employees. 
and the governor has continued to be silent on this as well. Can we end on a little bit of an op? You're making progress around the country, though, are you not? Oh, yes. What, I mean, what, listen, well, from Lift Our Voices, we've heard from thousands of women already. You saw some of them at that press conference mm -hmm. today. They feel empowered to stand up and say, me too. Okay, so we are making massive progress with women knowing that they're going to come forward and tell their stories. And I am incredibly optimistic that I will be passing my arbitration bill on the Hill on a federal level. And listen, if companies... You have someone as, uh, I was going to say, as nutty as Lindsey Graham signed on to that. Is that not correct? <laughs> well, I have a bipartisan... Listen, it's bipartisan. We saw bi bi bipartisan support today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sexual harassment is bipartisan. Yes, I have Senator Graham, and when we get done with the impeachment proceedings and however that turns out, the senator will be back trying to also pass my bill. And while Fox News has not yet agreed that uh, people should be released from prior agreements, NBC News has. Is that not correct? Purportedly. Uh -huh. And that's what gave us the idea that we would uh, demand that Fox let us out as well. Gretchen. I'll let you know when we hear from them. Good. I hope you will. It's good it's to see you. To Thanks see you. so much. The movie was great, by the way. Nice Thank to see you. you, Senator. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. We've been in touch with the House Speaker's Office, offering them an opportunity to respond.